Hello, today we will be discussing Liraglutid and the brand names of Liraglutid are Victoza or Saxenda. Liraglutid belongs to a group of medication known as glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonists or abbreviated as GLP-1 receptor agonists. And these GLP-1 agents go to the pancreas and there they enhance the pancreatic beta cells to secrete some insulin. And after insulin has been stimulated, it enters the blood supply and promotes now glucose to enter the body cells. And I try to remember the names of the GLP-1 agonists with acronym CELL-D. I mentioned that the GLP-1 agonists are very expensive and therefore I associate the GLP-1 agonist with selling it for a very high amount of dollars, thereby the acronym CELL-D, so D for dollars. S stands for semaglutid, E for exenatid, L for lixisenatid, and L for liraglutid, and finally D for dulaglutid. And the main effects of GLP-1 agonists are to increase insulin and thereby lower glucose in the body. And as mentioned earlier already, the mechanism of liraglutid and GLP-1 agonists in general is also to decrease inappropriate glucagon secretion. First of all, what does glucagon mean? So glucagon is a molecule just like insulin. However, it works as a counterpart, meaning it acts oppositely. So instead of moving now glucose into the cells from the blood, it promotes and increases glucose in the blood. So once liraglutid is in the body, it will decrease the inappropriate secretion of this molecule and therefore we would have an increased amount of insulin while we would have a reduced amount of glucagon. In that sense, we will now reduce the glucose in the blood and, and, and that is the main goal here. So the second mechanism now is to increase the growth of particular cells found within this pancreas. And these are the pancreatic beta cells that secrete insulin. And liraglutid will now increase in the growth and the replication of this cell and thereby further increase insulin secretion. The third mechanism is to slow down the gastric emptying so that food would move more slowly through the stomach and prevent the massive spike of glucose in the blood. The fourth mechanism is to decrease food intake by reducing appetite. So liraglutid can decrease your appetite in your brain, making you eat less and thereby having less glucose in the blood. Some enzymes in the body can break down or metabolize liraglutid and GLP receptor agonists in general, and these are D-peptidyl peptidase 4, so DPP4 and neutral endopeptidases. Or NEP. And why is this important, you may ask? Because we have a different medication that can act, for instance, to prevent this from happening. So, for example, we have uh, medications like DPP4 inhibitors which stop these enzymes. However, that will be uh, discussed then in another video. Uh, and, the DPP4, uh, and in this presentation, I just want to highlight now, highlight now that the GLP-1 agonist can be degraded or metabolized by the enzyme, but they are resistant to it because synthetic medications are manufactured in the lab, for example, to be resistant and therefore can work for a prolonged period of time, for example, 24 hours. Some GLP-1 agonists can even last one week, and this is really amazing. So, we can use liraglutid as an add-on therapy, meaning that you add liraglutid to another medication like metformin or liraglutid can also be used as a monotherapy, meaning that you prescribe this medication alone without any others. So, for instance, initial metformin treatment. If the patient is allergic to it or has contraindications for metformin, then liraglutid can also be used as a substitute. So liraglutid can also be effective as an add-on therapy and not only for diabetes, but also for weight loss patients, especially in patients with a BMI of more than 30, 30 BMI, uh, and also for other conditions related to weight, such as hypertension, dyslipidemia, and so on. And before we give liraglutid, we usually check some parameters, such as your weight, we check your glucose levels, meaning the sugar levels in the blood, and we also check the hemoglobin A1c. And the measurement of hemoglobin A1c just means that we have a glycated hemoglobin molecule and the hemoglobin is the molecule now that transports oxygen in your blood body and the hemoglobin A1c just refers to the glycated part meaning that sugar is, is attached to this hemoglobin and this sugar attachment usually happens when glucose is very high in the body for a very prolonged time. And therefore, the blood measurement will show that this patient has chronically very high levels. Note that this is not only at the time of measurement, but for a very long time. So, for example, more than three months and so. So, liraglutid has 
many advantages over other anti-diabetic medications. For example, it has a very high glycemic efficacy when comparing that to other medications. And glycemic effic efficacy just means how good is the medicine at lowering blood glucose levels. The second benefit of Liraglute is that lifestyle intervention and using the medication can begin simultaneously. So meaning that you don't start with lifestyle, changes and then after a couple of months begin with liraglutide. Instead, you start both at the same time. In contrast, for example, to other medications like metformin, where you have lifestyle, major, uh, lifestyle changes first, and they, this should be started first before starting the medication. But for liraglutide, it is perfect that you can start it immediately. Liraglutide is also beneficial for many patients uh, due to this, but also because it's safe uh, to administer, it, it's very good tolerated without gastrointestinal side effects. Liraglutide has key advantages in improving insulin resistance or sensitivity or weight loss, reducing cardiovascular risk factors. However, Liraglutide has some disadvantages like, uh, like it is expensive, for example, and that there are common gastrointestinal side effects and that the potential risk of medullary thyroid carcinoma, although this has been seen in only rats, but not with humans at the moment. Uh, so not only do we check these three parameters, weight, blood sugar levels, and hemoglobin A1C, we also need to exclude these contraindications before we start a medications. So contraindications are conditions that are contrary to or against this medication, thus making it inadvisable. In simple terms, some things have to be ruled out before we start the medication. Otherwise, it is harmful for the patient. So one contraindication of liraglutide um, is to, if we ask the patient if the patient has hypersensitivity to the medication. Did the patient have an allergy to it? If yes, never use liraglutide again. And for the second contraindication, we need, to de we need the details of the patient's medical history. We ask if the patient has a personal history or family history of medullary thyroid cancer. Personal history here means that did the patient have medullary thyroid cancer in his life? Okay, is it known? Family history of medullary thyroid cancer would refer to it if some of his family members had this type of cancer. And if yes, then liraglutide is not advised. The third contraindication here is before starting liraglutide, we need to check whether the patient had multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2. So many two. And if so, then liraglutide is not advised. The fourth contraindication is whether the patient is pregnant or breastfeeding. If so, then liraglutide is not advised. Fifth contraindication, gastroparesis, meaning is the patient having difficulty digesting food or not? If yes, not advised. As we mentioned already, one of the mechanisms was to slow down gastric emptying. And if the patient already has this difficulty digesting it, it is uh, slowing it down even further and that can be very dangerous. So liraglutide is administered now with a multi-dose pen similar to that of insulin but note that liraglutide and insulin are very different. However, liraglutide can be used with insulin together but it is essential to reduce the dose of insulin to prevent in hypoglycemia, so low, lyric, so low glucose level. And liraglutide is a medication. We have a multi-dose pens, as we said. We deliver 0.6, 1.2, and 1.8 milligram or more. Okay. Typically, liraglutide is injected into the upper arm, thigh, or abdomen. And if you use the injector to administer 0.6 milligram every day, it will last for about 30 days. While 1.2 milligram will last for 15 days, and 1.8 will last for 10 days. And remember to keep the injector pen away from heat. First, wash your hands with soap and water. And if you have different injector pens, make sure to pick the one labeled as Liraglutid or Victoza. The second step is to remove the pen cap and attach a new pen needle, twisting it to lock it in place. And the next step is to remove the needle cover of the injector pen. And suppose it is the first time you use the injector pen, clear the air from the needle by holding the pen upwards and moving the dye slowly until the flow check symbol li line lines up with the dose pointer. So you can tap the injector pen gently to move the up air upwards and the drop is seen at the needle when you press the button. And note that the dialing knob, the push button, are both on at the opposite end of the needle. And after there's no air in the needle, dial the pen back to zero. Next step is to turn the dosage knob to dial the number of units of liraglutide prescribed. And before injecting the liraglutide, select an injection site, whether the upper arm, the thigh or abdomen. This disinfect the skin and with one hand then hold this pen such that your thumb is free to reach the injection button. With the other hand, gen gently pinch up the skin around the injection site, insert the needle at the 45 
45 to a 90 degree angle, making a subcutaneous injection. And when you inject it, please hold the button for about five to six seconds before releasing it and removing the pen from the injection site, okay? Finally, pull out the needle, use an alcohol swab to press if you bleed and so on when the needle is removed and do not rub the injection site. The usual dosage depends on the brand of liraglutid being used. Saxenda, typically for weight loss, has a starting dose of 0.6 mg daily for one week, which increases with 0.6 mg daily in weekly intervals until a 3 mg daily dose is achieved. For Victoza, which is used to treat diabetes, the dosage is uh, 0.6, 1.2, 1.8 mg, and 0.6 mg is the initial dose, while 1.2 is the standard dose that may be raised to 1.8 if the hemoglobin A1c levels are not improving. The starting dose is to get your body used to the medication, reducing the side effects, and generally, liraglutide can be taken with or without meals. And note that no dosage adjustment is necessary in kidney insufficiency patients. However, watch out when starting liraglutide use or when increasing the dose of this medication. While taking liraglutide, we must uh, check your body weight, also your heart rate, also your blood glucose levels regularly, so go to your family doctor. Additionally, I would say that we check hemoglobin A1c about every six months or twice a yearly in patients who have stable disease and are meeting the treatment goals. However, we can review it more regularly, like every three months in patients who are not meeting the treatment goals. Okay. Three glycerides are also measured because liraglutide is effective on the lipids in the body and it decreases the triglycerides, the LDL cholesterol, the total cholesterol and increases HDL cholesterol. So we talked about general information uh, we, about liraglutide. We also talked about the uses of the liraglutide, what to check before giving the medication. We also checked the steps to administer liraglutide and dosage of liraglutide. And now we will talk about the side effects. It is possible that we can get headaches, nasopharyngitis, which means inflammation in the nasal and pharynx region, uh, gastrointestinal problems such as nausea, uh, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, flatulence and abdominal pain. And these are the most common side effects and all kinds of abdominal discomforts. And most of the liraglutide side effects are related to the abdomen region. And there can also be injection site reactions, meaning that where you puncture your skin can react. But this is also rare. So allergic reactions can also occur as with all other medications, but that is usually rare. And as we said with the contraindication part, medullary thyroid carcinoma has been seen in very few rodents or mice, but to no human at the moment. And that means it can happen, but it is impro improbable at the moment. And in summary, we can say now the liraglutide is a glucagon-like peptide the one receptor agonist or abbreviated as GLP-1. The trade names are Victoza or Saxenda. The difference between Victoza and Saxenda is that Saxenda is primarily used for weight loss, while Victoza is used to treat diabetes. And it is taken once daily via injection using a multi-dose pen. Saxenda has a start dose of 0.6 mg daily for one week, which increases 0.6 mg per day weekly intervals until 3 mg is reached. And the dosages for Victoza are 0 0.6, 1.2, and 1.8 milligram. The 0 0.6 is the initial, initial dose, 1.2 is the standard dose. And before you take this medication, we need to make sure you are not allergic to liraglutide and you or a family member has not had medullary thyroid cancer or multiple endocrine, endocrine neoplasia syndrome, type 2. And if you are pregnant or breastfeeding or having difficulty digesting food, then liraglutide is not advised. And once again, liraglutide's side effects are headache, nasopharyngitis, gastrointestinal problems such as nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, flatulence, abdominal pain, injection site reactions and allergic reactions. And once again, liraglutide's benefits are high glycemic efficacy compared with other diabetic medications. It means that it is good at lowering blood glucose levels. Uh, lifestyle intervention and using the medication can begin simultaneously, which means that you, you don't start with lifestyle changes. Then after a couple of months, you start with liraglutide. Instead, you start both at the same time. Okay, liraglutide is safe, is easy to administer, and many patients tolerate it without gastrointestinal side effects. So many patients. Liraglutide's key advantages are improving insulin resistance or sensitivity, uh, weight loss, reducing cardiovascular risk factors, and I think that's enough. Thank you uh, for watching, and until the following video, now take care. Bye bye.